Welcome to another video from explainingthefuture.com. Recently, I've been talking to lots of different companies about 3D printing. In this video, I therefore thought I'd highlight the involved business opportunities. Over the past year, 3D printing has entered the mainstream. In October 2012, Shapeways opened a factory of the future capable of 3D printing over 3 million objects a year. In January 2013, President Obama then highlighted the potential of 3D printing in his State of the Union address, while in February, Nike launched its Vapor Laser Talon with a 3D printed cleat. In July 2013, Microsoft even integrated native 3D printing support into Windows 8.1. During 2013, we've also seen NASA successfully test 3D printed rocket parts and the arrival of 3D printers in many retail outlets. Given that 3D printing is already a multi-billion dollar industry, more and more companies are keen to get involved. Aside from 3D printer manufacture, several business opportunities now present themselves and notably include enhancing product design, transforming traditional production, direct digital manufacturing, and facilitating personal fabrication. Today, most large manufacturers use 3D printers to create rapid prototypes that speed or otherwise improve their product design. The use of 3D printing for this purpose is therefore not revolutionary. This said, as desktop 3D printers get cheaper, more accurate and more reliable, opportunities are starting to exist to create concept models and prototypes far earlier and far more frequently. Only a few years ago, an industrial stereolithographic 3D printer cost at least $100,000. And yet, in November 2013, a desktop model called the Form 1 will start shipping for $3,299. It's also been reported that some Ford engineers now have MakerBot consumer 3D printers on their desks. The question for manufacturers is therefore not whether they're using 3D printers in product design, but where and how frequently. Just as personal computers escaped from corporate data centers in the 1980s and 1990s, so today it's time for 3D printers to invade a great many offices. Many traditional manufacturing processes are costly and time-consuming to tool up. For example, the production of metal parts using sand casting requires a pattern to be created around which sand is packed. The pattern then needs to be removed from the sand, which often requires the mould to be broken apart and reassembled. Molten metal is then poured in, which cools solid and the sand is broken away to reveal the final part. Today, 3D printers from pioneers including X1 and Voxeljet allow for patternless sand casting. Here, layers of casting sand are laid down and selectively sprayed with a foundry grade resin. This allows the direct and rapid creation of sand casting moulds into which molten metal is then poured. By 3D printing sand casting moulds, manufacturers can save a great deal of time and money. For example, the US Navy has managed to reduce the lead time for producing submarine compressor pumps from 51 weeks to 8 weeks, and the cost per unit from around $29,000 to $18,000. Across many industries, similar opportunities exist to use 3D printing to reduce the time and cost of mould making or other production tooling, and this is something that no manufacturer ought to ignore. In the short and medium term, it's also the area of industrial 3D printing application with by far the greatest business potential. As several pioneers now demonstrate, opportunities already exist to directly 3D print some final products or parts thereof. For example, nervous system 3D prints lamps and many items of jewellery. Via an app on the Nervous System website, customers can even create custom products, which Nervous System then gets 3D printed in nylon using the Shapeways 3D printing service. Another artist using 3D printing to create her products is Bathsheba Grossman. As she explained, with the advent of 3D printing, this is the first moment in art history when sculpture can, in a sense, be published. 
Other pioneers include Makeylab and That'sMyFace.com, both of whom are using 3D printing in toy manufacture. On the Makey Me website, customers design their own unique dolls that are then 3D printed. Meanwhile, over at That'sMyFace.com, customers upload a front and side image of their head, which can then be 3D printed and added to a range of action figures. Other companies creating customised products using 3D printing include Protoss Eyewear, who are 3D printing spectacle frames, and Bespoke Innovations, who 3D print fairings for prosthetic limbs. Another and quite distinct form of direct digital manufacturing is bioprinting. Here, specialist 3D printers lay down layers of cells that fuse together to create replacement living tissue. Already, pioneers including Organovo have managed to bioprint human arteries and liver tissue. At present, applications are limited to the creation of tiny tissue samples for drug testing. But within a decade or so, we should expect the first use of bioprinted materials in transplant surgery. In time, healing wounds by bioprinting directly onto the body may also become a possibility, something that is already being worked on at the Wake Forest Institute. Personal 3D printers can now be built or purchased for a few hundred dollars. As such hardware enters the mainstream, more and more people will be 3D printing things at home, and smart businesses are already starting to recognise this fact. For example, in January 2013, Nokia released a 3D printing development kit for its Lumina 820 smartphone that allowed anybody with 3D printing skills to produce a custom casing. And within only a few days, 3D printing enthusiasts were exchanging and showcasing their designs. In addition to helping customers modify, personalise and repair their products, many organisations could very easily start to offer promotional 3D object downloads. Today, free apps or screensavers are common giveaways, and within a year or so, any marketing campaign that does not include 3D printable content will be missing an easy trick. In retail, there are also opportunities to start selling both consumer 3D printers and consumables as well as 3D printing and scanning services. In 2013, some of the first 3D printer stores opened around the world. But right now, most people do not live near such a retail location, leaving a massive hole in many markets. So, what do businesses need to know about 3D printing right now? Well, here are just a few of my own predictions. Firstly, 3D printing will drive a revolution, but it will not replace most traditional manufacturing methods. Rather, within 10 years, I estimate that 3D printing will be used directly or indirectly in the manufacture of about 20% of products or parts thereof. Secondly, the desire to achieve material savings will drive the adoption of 3D printing in many industries. This is due to the fact that 3D printing is an additive rather than subtractive process that can achieve minimal wastage. Thirdly, within a decade, scanning and digital inventory will have a big impact on spare part availability and product repair. Fourthly, opportunities will increasingly exist for customised products with one or a few 3D printed parts. Today, far too many people are dismissing 3D printers as production tools because they can't manufacture an entire product. In sharp contrast, a few smart pioneers are starting to customise or otherwise transform their wares by adding just a few 3D printed components. Fifthly, I believe that software development will determine competitive advantage for many pioneers of fully or partially 3D printed products. Soon, everybody will have access to the same industrial 3D printers. Successful companies will therefore be those that offer the best interface between their customers and 3D printing hardware. Finally, sometime in the 2020s or 2030s, bioprinting will become a standard medical practice. The adoption of most new technologies follows a well understood exponential curve, and for 3D printing, several of these can now be identified. For a start, since the late 1980s, 3D printing has been used for rapid prototyping. More recently, we've seen the start of adoption curves for the transformation of traditional production, 
direct digital manufacturing and personal fabrication. In a decade or so, all of these are likely to be mainstream activities. But before that occurs, there'll be possibilities for early adopters to achieve some significant quick wins. More information on 3D printing can be found in my book, 3D Printing, The Next Industrial Revolution, as well as on explainingthefuture.com. But now that's it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.